Well, I must say that it seems right and proper to me that men and women be treated fairly and equally. Mm. And I think I speak for all of us when I say that we all feel that in principle there should be such targets set and goals achieved. Yeah, in principle. Bill? Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm fully in favour of this idea. We must have some positive discrimination in favour of women. Of course, it wouldn't work with the foreign and Commonwealth Office for obvious reasons. I mean, we couldn't post women ambassadors to Iran or any of the Muslim nations. No, quite right. Right. Most of the third world are not so advanced as we are in connection with women's rights, and as we have to send uh, diplomats to new postings every three years, this idea is obviously not for us, but I do applaud the principle. <laughs> yeah. Yes, me too. I'm all in favour of it. I, I think we need the feminine touch. Uh, women are better at handling some problems than men, uh, no doubt about it. Of course, we would have to make an exception as far as the Home Office is concerned. Uh, women are not the right people to run prisons or the police. And quite probably they wouldn't want to do it anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but you do agree with the principle? Oh, yes, no question. <laughs> Peter? Well, yes, the same applies to defence. Alas, all those admirals and generals. Uh, it wouldn't be possible, of course, to appoint a woman as head of security, for instance. M would have to become F. <laughs> <laughs> yes, defence is clearly a man's world, like industry and employment. Indeed. All those trade union leaders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what about the DHSS, John? Well, I'm happy to say that women are well represented near the top of the DHSS. You know, after all, we have two of the four deputy secretaries currently in Whitehall. Uh, not eligible for permanent secretary, of course, because they're deputy chief medical officers, and I'm not sure they're really suitable for... Uh, uh, no, no, that's unfair. Of course, women are 80% of our clerical staff and 99% of the typing grade, so we're not doing too badly by them, are we? <laughs> and in principle, I'm in favour of them going to the very top. Good, good. Well, I think the feeling of the meeting is, in principle, that we're all thoroughly in favour of equal rights for the ladies. Yes. It's just that there are certain special problems in individual departments. Yes. 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 Now, what about this question of the quota? Frankly, I must tell you that I'm against it. Yes. Well, not yes. politicians, I do. We must, in my view, always have the right to promote the best man for the job, regardless of sex. No. <laughs> Speaking as an ardent feminist myself, I think that the problem lies in recruiting the right sort of women. Married women with families tend to drop out because, in all honesty, they cannot give their work their full single-minded attention. And unmarried women with no children are not fully rounded people with a thorough understanding of life. Yeah. <laughs> so that in practice it's really possible to find a fully rounded married woman with a happy home and three children who's prepared to devote her whole life, or virtually her whole life, to a department. It's catch-22, really. Well, catch-22, sub-paragraph A. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we must ensure that our respective ministers oppose this quota idea in Cabinet by drawing our own minister's attention to each department's own special problems. Mm. Uh, but we will, of course, uh, recommend the principle of equal opportunities at every level. Uh, uh, principle, yes. yes. Uh, may I say just one more thing? Through the chair, I'd like to add that my minister also sees the promotion of women as a means of creating greater diversity at the top of the service. I think we should stress when briefing our ministers that, quite frankly, you couldn't find a more diverse lot than us. Absolutely. Absolutely. A real cross-section of the nation. Yeah. <laughs>